In this video, I'll demonstrate some data management practices uh, using SPSS. Uh, first, what do you do when you have missing data? You can see that I've got uh, a missing data point highlighted here. We had some fake data for some items that I just made up. Second, what to do when you have a reverse coded item, an item that goes in the opposite direction than other items on a scale. So if we have four items on a scale, where we're trying to measure something like political interest. And if one of the items is coded in such a way that it goes in the opposite direction, then we need to, in SPSS, uh, run a uh, transformation on that data in order to change the direction of the coding. Uh, that'll become clear once I show you how to do it. And then the third thing that I'll uh, demonstrate here is how to create a mean score using the four different items on this imaginary scale. So let's uh, first take a look at the variable view, get a feel for what's going on here. These are some questions I just made up. This is not an actual scale, but you can see that they, they measure the same theme. Politics interests me greatly. Politics is a topic I usually avoid, and that's the reverse coded one. It's going in the opposite direction, so that a high score indicates avoidance of politics rather than interest in politics. The third one is it is important for all citizens to be involved in politics and for I keep in, informed in politics, on national politics. Looking at the direction of the coding for all the items, a one is strongly disagree whereas a four is strongly agree. So if we want item number two to go in the same direction as the other ones, we need to rescore it and that's why I have an R over here on the item to remind me that that's a reverse coded item. I want the meaning, the thematic meaning of all four items to be going in the same direction. But before I show you that, let's deal with the missing data point. So I've got a missing data point here. And, uh, you know, one approach is just to leave it empty, just to leave it blank. But for a number of reasons, that's not the best approach. A better way to do it uh, is to go over here in the variable view and you have this column called missing and it's there for a reason because you can identify a uh, uh, numerical coding that represents a missing data point. So whenever SPSS encounters the, the number that you have set to be the missing data point value, it will ignore that uh, piece of information. So if you click on that, so I'll show what I did here. If you highlight any of these fields, you get a little mini blue box that you can click. And open that up and uh, click the discrete missing values option. I like to use 999. Click OK. And then you can copy that and paste that same instruction across all the items. See that uh, it's all set up now. If I go back to data view, you'll see why 999 is a good number to use. It's easy to see. So if you're scanning a very large database with uh, hundreds or thousands of uh, participants and maybe dozens of variables, it's really easy to see this. It stands out. And that, that's why I use 999. You can use any number you want it's got to be a number that's not going to appear naturally within the data uh, that you've accumulated. So 999 does the trick. Uh, in order for it to work properly though, you have to actually code it in here as your uh, value for the uh, missing data. So that's that part is taken care of. Now let's focus on the reversal of item number two. So we already know that the meaning of the items uh, is um, that a high score represents uh, more interest in politics. And this one obviously is uh, reverse coded because the meaning of it is that the high score would be that person avoids uh, the topic of politics. So in order to get these four items to all be coded in the same direction so that a high score represents more of this uh, latent variable, more of this thing that we're trying to measure, which is interest in politics, I need to change every four into a one, every three into a two, every two into a three, and every one into a four. 
Now you could do this by hand, but whenever you do things by hand, by changing these yourself, uh, you run the risk of making an error. Again, if it's a small data set, it doesn't really matter because it's easy to see what you've done. Uh, but if it's a large data set, every time you do one of these things, you're running a small risk of typing in the wrong number and you might not notice it. So the best practice is to go to transform and we want recode into the same variable. Let me, uh, actually, let me reset that so I start fresh. Highlight the, uh, the item that you want to recode and only that item. That's why I put the R there after the item number so that it's easy to see. Carry that over into this field. Click the old and new values. And in this box, you type one for the old value, four, or whatever it is that you want the new value to be. Once you have both of those in place, then you click add, and you get this instruction that says old value one, and what looks kind of like an arrow, uh, new value equals four. We do this for each combination. You have to do all of them. So one becomes a three, uh, rather a two becomes a three, a 3 becomes a 2, and a 4 becomes a 1. Now you can see visually that every combination is taken care of. There are only uh, four possible response options, and all of them are set up for reversal. Click Continue and OK. And what's happened here, if you go back in the video, you can see that these numbers changed, but the other ones did not, the other items these ones did not change, for example, but these ones did. Okay, so now that we have the missing data completed, and now that we have the item number two recoded, we can uh, create a new variable, and we'll use the compute variable option here, and we need to call it a name. Let's call it politics mean. And this, uh, this is going to be the new variable that's created. In order to do the mean, I go over here into this function group, scroll down until you find statistical, click on that, and then you'll see these different options open up. Um, the one that we want is the mean. We uh, push this button to carry it up, and now you see mean parentheses question mark comma question mark. It's going to be the mean of these four items. So with that first question mark highlighted, I carry the first item over. And you can see that the question mark disappears. But the, uh, it's, it's replaced by the item number one. Next, I highlight the second question mark, carry that over. Now I've run out of question marks. You just, in this case, type in a, a, a comma highlight the next item in the series, carry it over, type in another comma, highlight the next and last item in the series, and carry it over. Now you can see that I've got all four items listed in here, each item separated from the other ones by a comma. It's not going to work if you don't have those commas in there, so make sure you have that in there. And what, uh, what the program is going to do is it's going to take this mathematical instruction, this statistical formula for the mean, uh, and it's going to uh, calculate that and put that in as our new variable. Click OK, and now we have politics mean, and that's the mean score of all of these. Now if we look at, um, if we look at participant number 11, let's just check and make sure that the missing data value worked properly. 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 1 is 6, and you can see that what it's doing is it's taking the mean of these three values, ignoring the missing value. So the missing value does not count towards the mean for that particular participant. And that's kind of an important thing. Now, if you had a, um, let's do it this way. If you had a um, missing data field where it's just blank, you're going to get the same answer. Uh, let's, uh, let's try that out. Compute. And I'll just call this one uh, politics mean number two. And you can see that we do get the same thing. 
uh, and that's expected. But it's just better overall to have 999 because you can see it more easily. It's just the you know good data and uh, good data management practice. So uh, hope this is uh, useful for you in your research. Uh, thanks for watching.